Hey YouTube, Devin here with Comics and Stuff. Welcome back, happy Friday. Hope everybody's doing okay. Um, my deepest apologies for not posting last Friday. I ended up with some stomach virus that sent me to the ER. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, in any case, today we're going to be talking about uh, Dell and Gold Key, the, a brief history of Dell and Gold Key comics, um, and I'm going to kind of explain why you always hear those two names associated. Dell and Gold Key were two separate publishing companies, um, but today I will kind of make clear for those of you who don't know why they're so closely associated. Um, this is going to be part of the Comics Histories uh, playlist, which people seem to be really enjoying, so you know I'm glad that everybody's liking it and I'm doing my best to keep it going. So uh, without really further ado, I just kind of want to jump into it. So we'll start in the 1920s with Dell Comics. So they were the f one of the first comic book publishing companies to open ever. And their first book was um, called uh, The Funnies, which was published in 1929. Um, that's also the year they opened, so that was the, what they published their first year. Uh, coming up in the 1930s, in 1933, Dell published Famous Funnies, which uh, is considered by many comic book historians the first legitimate modern age comic book, of, or comic book of the modern day. Um, you know, and, and a lot of people kind of argue that, but it's that's what most comic book historians would consider to be the first comic book. Um, it also was sold without a cover price, so a lot of people debate whether or not it was sold for 10 cents or what. Nobody knows. Um, so fast forward five years to 1938, Dell forms a partnership uh, with Western Publishing in which uh, Dell would basically pay for and distribute the comic books uh, from Western. Uh, so with this, they got their licensed characters, so they would be distributing um, characters like Tarzan, the Lone Ranger, uh, Felix the Cat, and many Disney characters as well. Uh, and then, within the 1930s, Dell became one of the most popular comic book publishing companies, um, selling m copies in the millions. Uh, in 1938, they also uh, launched their most well-known uh, title called Four Color Comics, and that ran for almost 1,300 issues. Um, if you guys have been paying attention, Action Comics is coming up on its 1,000th issue, so 1,300, that's a lot. Uh, moving into the 1940s, so 1948, uh, so a little farther in, like 10 years later, Dell is, uh, they refuse an invitation to the mem uh, of membership to the, let me look at my notes, the National Association of Comic Magazine Publishers. So the association was formed, uh, like, preemptively um, to government, like, intervention. Um, so it's kind of the same deal as uh, the Comics Code Authority. The, uh, the government was looking at, uh, you know, monitoring how and censoring how they were published because of public outcry. Um, but the Dell vice president, Helen Mayer, uh, told Congress that Dell opted out because they would let, they would not let their, um, you know, family-friendly, you know, good comic books um, become an umbrella for crime publishers or crime and gore and horror comic book publishers. So, makes sense. Uh, moving into the 1950s, again in 1954, Dell did refuse uh, the invitation to join the Comics Code Authority. Uh, that led to their pledged appearance, in which, uh, in the back of their books, um, they would, I guess, let's see, the pledge promised that their customers. Um, that the editorial process that they had eliminates objectionable material, uh, and sorry, my notes are actually very detailed, um, and concluded with the new classic slogan, Dell Comics are good comics. So, ta-da! Uh, Dell also placed uh, ads uh, in regular magazines and newspapers with full-page advertisements and showcased their like fr fa uh, family-friendly comic books um, and how they're you know wholesome. Uh, Dell also uh, launched their Dell Comics Club in which uh, it would serve as like a subscription service for their non-Disney titles. So if you wanted to read other books, you signed up for the Dell Comics Club. Moving into the 1960s, so in 1962, the partnership between Dell and Western um, kind of ended and Western created its own publishing imprint called Gold Key. So there's that. Uh, during that time, there was an overlap, hence why the two names are still like, uh, really like associated because they were being published by this. Their books were being published by two different companies, but they were still the same books. Um, most of Dell's talent actually ended up going with Gold Key, but um, you know some of the key artists stayed behind with Dell to support their new line of comic books. So while Dell was declining, Gold Key was having a slow start. So they started reprinting old Dell stories for, uh, in 1967 and selling them in bags of like five, or trying new 
innovative things like magazine sized books or black and white books, things like that. Um, Gold Key did follow Dell's example of staying out of the Comics Code Authority. So you'll see that a lot, you know, Dell Key or Gold Key comics also do not have the Comics Code Authority seal on it. And then in uh, Gold Key, they continue to publish Disney comics. And um, they also picked up the rights for Star Trek and Twilight Zone books, which is cool. So I'm sure you've seen those before. I think they're really awesome, actually. I really like the old Twilight Zone looking books. Um, in 1966, D uh, Gold Key lost the rights to characters like Flash Gordon, Popeye the Sailor Man, um, which were both originally from um, King Feature Syn Syndicate, uh, as well as numerous of their Hanna-Barbera characters, Hanna-Barbera characters to Charlton Comics. Uh, moving into the 1970s, so Dell continued to publish for another 12 years up until 1974 um, with a few failed attempts to uh, at bringing other like movie franchises into comic books. Um, when they closed, their original characters from like the Silver Age era went to Gold Key Comics while Dell dissolved. Um, so they were still that weird little overlap. Um, so Gold Key lost the rest of Star Trek comics in uh, 1979 to Marvel Comics. So, um, you know, the license switched over. And here's a fun fact, actually, for you guys. So in 1978, a little, little well-known comic book artist named Frank Miller debuts as a comic book artist in Twilight Zone number 84. So while he's known for his Batman stuff, um, he actually... Yeah, started off with Gold Key, um, a like a mid-grade copy of Twilight Zone number 84, raw, ungraded, goes maybe around two hundred dollars or so. So if you're a Frank Miller fan, that's that's one of your books. Uh, 1980s, so 1984, Western Publishing went out of business after years of decline, um, and in 1989, Valiant Comics acquired the rights to numerous Dell and Gold Key characters, notably um, Doctor Solar and Turok Son of Stone, to launch their own universe. We all know Valiant, they're getting um, their own movie series coming up with Harbinger Wars and Bloodshot, but in any case. Um, and then that's really it. That it, it, was in the 1980s, uh, 1990s, and early 2000s were really quiet. And then getting into 2010, uh, as of 2012, actually, Gold Key and all of its intellectual properties are owned by NBC Universal. Um, but they're just kind of stagnant in there. So that is the entirety of the history of Dell and Gold Key Comics, why they're associated. Um, I hope this was educational for you guys. I hope you all learned some new stuff. And if I could have done anything better in this video, please, you know, make sure you let me know. Um, I really enjoy making these videos just like I, I hope you guys really enjoy watching them. Um, you know, make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, give it all some love. Check out the website uh, or the uh, Redbubble page, you know, get your, um, you know, comics and stuff, t-shirts and support. And yeah, that's it. So I'll catch you guys next week.